All right, next, peaches. Peaches are stone fruit. Uh, peaches are the primary stone fruit that we grow here in Kentucky. Um, scab, scab is very common. Um, peach scab is um, going to overwinter in twigs in rough bark. It's going to infect right about um, right about the pink stage or right um, right before bloom. I'm sorry, shuck split on on scab. Uh, right at shuck split, which is um, essentially petal fall, and at that point, it's going to infect for about two to four weeks after that, and then that susceptibility is over. So it's the very young fruit that are infected. That is the critical period. Rainy years much worse. We have no resistance to it um, because it overwinters in the dead, dying, and diseased wood. Pruning out, prune that wood out and get it out of there. Again, sanitation and just live with it. This is a superficial pathogen. It's right on the skin. So a lot of people peel it off. They just don't think it's worth spraying for. That's one of the ones. It won't hurt anybody. I guess you can eat it. I'm not sure. I don't know anybody who has. <clears throat> Bacterial spot looks a lot like the scab to a lot of people who don't know the difference. Bacteria though, um, they will, they need a warmer temperatures. This pathogen needs warmer temperatures. It will infect a little bit later. Loves wet conditions. A hot, wet summer is ideal for this one. It can also infect leaves. And again, it will overwinter in twigs. Uh, infected twigs are um, just twigs that have died for other reasons. So dead, dying, and diseased wood um, because bacterial pathogens like hot and very moist environment, pruning to increase air circulation will dry those leaves and twigs out much sooner and it'll, um, it'll make that environment less conducive for that bacterium. Uh, resistant cultivars are in the Midwest Tree Fruit uh, uh, Pest Management Handbook. So they're in this one, they're listed. Again, that's online in PDF form. If you can't find it, let me know. I'll send it right to you. And thirdly, with peach, peach leaf curl, this seems to be probably the most, uh, the most common disease of peach in homeowner, um, in home landscapes and home orchards. We really don't see it at the commercial level because our commercial growers manage a lot of their diseases anyway. Peach leaf curl will uh, begin infecting right at pink stage. So before bloom, as those buds start to start to swell and you can first see pink, that's when peach leaf curl, the peach leaf curl um, fungus is going to infect very early. <clears throat> Once we see symptoms from peach leaf curl, that pathogen has already, um, already sporulated pretty much and that's already um, infected. Peach leaf curl's uh, pathogen is going to overwinter in bud scale, so at sporulation, it, uh, the spores blow all over, but those that lodge under bud scales are gonna hang out there, and they're going to infect leaves before they emerge from those buds, okay? So they emerge infected. So managing it really early, very important. Uh, removing leaves before um, sporulation occurs. So you've got that little bit of time where a, a symptomatic leaf is gonna come out, but it hasn't sporulated yet. Once it's powdery, it's too late. Um, Red Haven derivatives are more tolerant to peach leaf curl than some of the others. Uh, fungicides, um, really important. Pre, pre, um, well, delayed dormant, so pre-pink or late in the season, right after leaves fall, kind of that, um, right after that dormant period, copper can be used, so you can use, there are some organic products there. So treating it before or after the season. And finally, brown rot. Brown rot is uh, also very common. This pathogen will infect, it can infect at the um, flowering stage, really not as, um, really not as vivid as once the um, fruit are infected. Fruit become more susceptible as they mature or as they become softer and the sugar, um, sugar is up. This pathogen, this monolinea pathogen, will overwinter in uh, infected twigs, so there is a canker involved in this, very minimal, um, or in fruit mummies that fall to the ground. So again, guess what? Clean picking. Um, remove mummies, remove any fruit on the ground, and harvest both clean, um, 
both clean fruit and infected fruit. Um, minimizing fruit injury, monolinia is kind of a secondary, an opportunistic pathogen. It loves damaged fruit. That can be sunburn, that can be birds, that can be insects. Um, pruning again for air circulation, so a good pruning job, really important, and sometimes homeowners tend to not do the, the really aggressive pruning that a commercial orchard will. And then of course we have lots of questions about disease, um, disease in fruit when in reality they're insects. So if you kind of question, get a knife and cut it open. So a lot of um, peach will ooze, so if there are a lot of um, insect damage, you'll see some ooze in there. So sometimes there's question, but you can get a knife and tell the difference. Uh, black knot of plum and cherry, really common, especially in our wild prunus species. Um, this pathogen is going to start sporulating uh, before, before um, new growth begins, so it's going to be an early one. Um, early infections are kind of, they're kind of hard to see that first year. They're going to be softer and greener. It's the second year that you're going to see the kind of the black gaully knots, and those of course can be just, um, just cut out and removed. So throw them out, sanitation pruning and removing wild plum species um, those seem to be everywhere and resistant cultivars in the Midwest um, tree fruit pest management handbook